Let's start with your full name. And could you spell the last name? Because we're afraid yeah, of see, the French I, accent. I'm, I'm just worried about, you know, we're not going to get Yeah, it right. see, I got married and I have another name, but I played, uh, so I used Lee. Yeah, the one. Well, but should use I use Dries yeah, use the one. Yeah, use the one that you actually played under. Yeah, and that's. Then where and when were you born? So, go ahead. I got gotcha. you. All right. <clears throat> okay. My name is Dolores Lee. Uh, um, my maiden name is Lee. Right. Okay. I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, April 21st, uh, 1935. What was your early childhood like? Great. Yeah. I had a great life. Well, where were you? I mean, you said Jersey, but where, where I mean, what was the, the, the actual block that area? Uh, what was that like? It was, it was all tenement houses. Uh, it was all tenement houses, yeah. In fact, there were nine kids in, in, in my family, right? I'm the fourth of, of nine. My mother and father, and we lived in four rooms. Now, what they call railroad rooms, you know? No. Railroad rooms are straight, just straight rooms. So there was a kitchen, two bedrooms, and a parlor, right? Now, nine kids, you know, whenever I'd say, you know, how many kids were in your family? You know, where did you? I lived in four rooms, right? And I'd say, was it, was, it cra was it crowded? The mice walked around hunchback, you know? <laughs> Well, we had we had a lot of fun. I had a great mother and father, you know. What and did Dad do? My father was a railroad man. Okay. You well, know, my and grandfather was actually. Yeah. Was he? Most yeah. people years well, ago, yeah, especially yeah. Irish too, you yeah. know, and from yeah. that area, yeah. all my brothers became railroad men, yeah. Yeah. you know. Your mom was a homemaker. Yeah, my mother. Yeah, and she was a real good mother, you know. I mean, we'd be out in the snow or something. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you one story that will really hit you. My father would go to work at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, this tenement house was cold because we only had one stove in the kitchen, you know? And uh, Daddy would go down to the, the bakeries, but the bakeries would be cooked bacon at the time. And you, you know what Kaiser rolls are, right? So he'd go down and get a dozen of, of Kaiser rolls and bring them up to Mama before he went to work. In the meantime, she was making a great big pot of cocoa. This is 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, you wonder why, right? We were all sleeping. There might have been six in this bed and three in the other, you know. And ba babies didn't have carriages, I mean cribs, because we had no room for a crib. But they used to have coach carriages, you know, that you'd take down the stairs. And the baby slept in the, in the coach carriage, right? So anyway, after Daddy went to work, Mom had... She would come around to each one of us and, like, say she came to me and she'd have the cup of hot, hot cocoa and a roll of butter, right? And she'd have it cut, like, in squares. And she'd say, hey, Dolores, Dolores, wake up here. Take some cocoa. And you'd be half asleep, you know, and it was such a nice feeling to get that hot cocoa. She'd hold the, the, the cup and she'd let you, you know, and then she'd say, here, take a bite of the roll. And you'd do that, you know? And that was just me. Then after me, she'd go to the next one and the next one. The woman never slept. You know? How could you do that, go to nine kids? You know what I mean? How, what was your early schooling like? Going to school? Catholic like school. That? Okay. Yeah. Catholic like? school with the like? uniform. It was great, you yeah. know, but it, with those nuns were tough, you know? Yeah, you know? I mean, <laughs> you just didn't, you know. But I, I, I really never had, oh, they sent me to the kindergarten. First, before, my first, the sister before me, she would, she was able to go at four. Well, it was my time. They said, no, they weren't taking them four years old and you had to wait to five, right? And I was mad as the dickens, you know? Now, when my brothers and sisters would come home with their homework, I used to take their homework. I learned division by three numbers before I went to school. You know, they used to call me the Jewish lawyer because I had all their papers. And my, uh, my father's aunt, my, you know, my grand aunt, she had bought me a big book bag and I used to carry it all around with all their things. And I'd, I'd read them and figure out how they did this and did that, you know? So I go to kindergarten and um, we had a teacher, we didn't have a nun. You know, so after kindergarten, I go into the first grade. 
So I was only in there, I guess, about a month, and they picked me and a couple other kids, and they brought us up to this other classroom. They brought us up to the second grade, you know? And I didn't like it there, you know? So after about two weeks, I'm back in the first grade, and nobody noticed me. And so the, teach, the nun was sick. So the first, the kindergarten teacher, Miss Eggs, she's, they had like a, a, a swinging door uh, between the classrooms. So she was watching both classrooms. And I'll never forget this because she said, anybody know how to spell uh, a refrigerator? You know, an uh, icebox, icebox. And I raised the hand, you know, and she said, you know how to spell it? I said, yeah, F-R-I-G-I-D-A-I-R-E, -I -I -E, because we had a fridge in there. <laughs> we didn't have an icebox, but we used to call it an icebox. And she's, she couldn't get over it, you know? And then she said, Dolores, didn't we put you upstairs a couple weeks ago? And I said, yeah. She said, what are you doing here? I didn't like it up there, so I come back. All my friends. <laughs> you so, School this was, was the kid I was. Yeah, I was out sure. of mind of my own, sure, you know? Sure. And last night when they had that security out off the yeah, after yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. that just threw me. <laughs> All right, so you're in Jersey, you're in the tenements. You playing baseball or stickball? No, I wasn't at the time. Yeah. At the, well, that was, oh, okay. So now we're back to four years old again, okay. right? Yeah. And, uh, oh, they did send me up to second grade. Okay, yeah. And when I get up there, the teacher says to me, she calls me up and she said, can you, you know, can you read this? I said, no, I can't read it. I could read it. Mm. But I, I wasn't going to tell them that I could do anything because I wanted to go back to the first grade, right? So after, well, she used a lot of psychology and I realized what had happened, you know? And she said, when's your birthday? And I said, April 21st. She said, oh, she said, my sister's birthday is April 21st, too, and she gives me a 50-cent piece. Well, I loved her. <laughs> so after that, I read the book for her, and I did the thing, and I stayed there, you know? And years later, right, she had a relative on the same block that I lived when we moved to Greenville, and I couldn't get there, you know? And, I, you know, all the years, I, I bet she just tricked me, you know? So I went in and I found out it was a sister and I said, um, how the heck was it? She, she mentioned something about her sister, you know, and oh, my sister did that, you know, something that was connected to it. Oh, she, no, she said, oh, that's my sister's birthday, you know, after me telling her. And so I went in and I asked, I found out that she had visited her and I went in there later and I said, you know, it, when's your birthday? And she gave me something, and I said, I knew she fooled me, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. yeah. So you're, you spent your whole um, early life in the city, in the tenements? In, in, downtown in the tenements? Yeah. When I was 12, we moved out oh, okay. because the from? house was sold, oh, okay. right? Uh, and um, we went to live, my grandmother had died, mm -hmm. and we went to live up in the house that my mother grew up in. You know, a one family house, wow. you know? With all those kids. Yeah, and I mean, it was a palace compared to the other sure. thing because, sure. you know, the girls had their rooms and, oh, you know, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a big house, you know? Now, had you played at all before? I mean, were you, were you no, well, now I got to get back to that okay. four years yeah. old. Yeah. The men in this firehouse, did I tell you? No. Oh, yeah. okay. You told Jim. There was a, yeah. there was a, um, a police and fire repair shop, and all the police cars would come in, and the fire engines. And it. now, these men were—they um, were firemen and policemen, but they didn't have any disability thing. They were men that got hurt on the job. Follow me? Yep. And yep. so, what they did, <clears throat> in other words. If they could fix a car, or they were carpenters. There was a carpenter shop in there. There was a they welding a shop. Yeah, they they would put them in there so sure. they keep their pension and, yeah. and have a job, you know. And they, they were all they were all great men. That's how I got the nickname, Pickles. 
because there's like 300 kids around the block, and they're not remembering all the kids' things, you know, and when they're, we're coming home for lunch or something, you know, or, hey, Pickle Puss, hey, Pollock, hey, Choo Choo Face, this is the names they called us, you know? And they call me Pickles now in the league. That, to me, I love, you know, in other words, I love the, the feeling about that, and I only wanted it to be kept for downtown, you know, the Bright Street shopmen. They'd make toys for the, the guys would in the carpenter shop. At Christmas time, they'd, you know, send turkeys up to everybody's house or whoever, you know, baskets and stuff like that, and all the toys. And I remember, uh, go to the head of the class thing, that we had that back and forth. We knew all those, you know, my, my brothers and sisters. They, men were very good to everybody. But they took a, a special liking to me because at lunchtime, when we only lived like two blocks away from the, the school, and you come home. They didn't have buses to take you to school and all this. So <clears throat> when the boys would come home, it was the same time the men were having the lunch. They used to play catch with the boys every day. Gotcha? Yep. Now. You didn't have a glove. No, no, it was a rubber yeah. ball or yeah, a tennis yeah, sure. ball, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of these men, they had played like semi-pro thing, you know, they were ball players. So there was four that were, they were, and then they'd spin on the ball when they throw it to you and you wonder how they do it. You know, all, <laughs> it sounds disgusting, but it was fun, you know. But anyway, I used to, I was four and I couldn't go to school until I was five because they changed that age. So I used to stand against the wall. Now you got to figure, in the city, the sidewalk is 12 feet. The street where the cars go is like 70 feet, and then 12 feet on the other. I'm standing against the wall watching them play ball, watching them play catch with the boys. So intrigued, you know? One day the ball happened to come over to me, I pick it up, four years old, and threw it all the way across the street. After that, I was included. They played catch with me. From four all the way up. We moved from there when I was 12, but it was like every day, you know? And they teach me all different things, like what, then, then we started using gloves, you know? And they teach me how to throw curves, how to, do, you know? But they spent a lot of time with me. I guess because I was a girl and had the ability, you know? I was a very lucky kid. Everything in my life seemed to fall right in place, you know? So you didn't really know a lot about baseball, just that these were really amazing Oh, no, my father, my, oh, father, yeah. my father and my mother used to take, us, take me oh, over to, oh. the, we were Dodger fans, and we used to go over there, and, you know, watch the Dodgers. Yeah. And, and I gotta tell don't let me forget a story about oh, yeah, when I was playing ball, but sure. that it was when I was playing ball. After the league, yeah. the manager picked a tour team and we, we got paid by the gate and everything. But he said, you know, you go into a town, we were playing men, you know, and we had a booking agent out of um, Omaha, Nebraska, Matt Pascal. So Matt Pascal would give, he'd, he'd line up like a whole week and then he'd send us the thing and then we'd go from place to place and play. Yeah, yeah. And apparently Matt, I don't know, or the town that, that we were going to play, they'd have these big banners, women baseball tonight, you know? Now, that was great. The people loved it. But, you know, how are these fellas going to feel playing against girls? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we figured, the manager figured, we didn't figure, he figured that, well, maybe if we, if we put on a demonstration before the ball game, maybe 15 minutes to a half hour, if we did certain things, like we had infield and, and, and hit hit the outfielders, and, and you know, just to give them a, a shot that, you know, they know how to play ball. This isn't going to be a, you know, a comedy show, you know? And so he said to, to us, you know, does anybody know how to do anything like, uh, like throw two balls or juggle or something like that? And I was a very confident kid because all my life I had all of these people, you know, 
yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. You know? And I said, yeah, I could do it. And, you know, he said, well, what could you do? He said, I said, I don't know, but I'd, I'll do whatever you want. He said, can you throw two balls? And I said, sure. And I never threw two balls again before, you know? And I went out there and I threw it. And so then it, we, I had set up, I'd put a catcher in the right, uh, the batter's box, mm -hmm. you know, had them in the batter's box, you know? So I'd, they'd be, you know, crouched down like a catcher, right? And I'd, I'd throw the ball, you know? Then I'd have one move back, you know, and, one, and then have them move forward. Then I'd have them stand up, you know? <laughs> You're making this up along the way. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> No, you know, it, it was it was yeah. perfect, you know. Yeah. I figured, you know, make it a little interesting. Sure, sure. Now they wouldn't have, wow, that's great. It's the easiest thing you could do because physics, I mean, I didn't know anything about physics, but when you think about it, if you're there and I'm going to, it's, it's the idea, I have a small hand, you know. As long as I could get those two balls in sure, my hand, sure. and I was a pitcher, I was used to holding a baseball anyway, you know. And so when I throw them, they'd go there, you know. <laughs> let's get back. Let's get back to. We'll, we'll get there again. Back to my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand that the the firemen and the, and the policemen really were a major impact on. They were. They were. They, so, were. they were good to you. You felt important. Your plan to do that. So, did you get? better at playing baseball as just a kid? I mean, were you, other kids are playing baseball too. I mean, I yeah, I was, the, kinds of girls who were let me tell you. In the back lot and stuff yeah. like that. Let me tell you, I play with about 11, 11 boys, right? Okay. Now, if you play ball when you were a kid, yes. you so choose upsides. Pitcher. How did pitcher. you, how did you choose upsides? Yeah, I was always the last one to show No, them. but how did they do it? Yeah, they go all take You care. have a we bat. They throw the bat. Yeah, 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 sure. And yeah, they put yeah. it around your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, usually, you know, boys do They always had me choosing. So even the boys respect it. But where where were you playing with the boys? Were Out in the street. Sometimes we'd get down to the lot. Okay. We'd empty a, a, a lot that a house yeah. might have been b pulled down, yeah. you know? And we'd play. So this is your, your, your what, 10, 11 years old? What, what yeah, about? yeah. Right and then, right. then we moved up to Greenville. Right, okay. Okay. But then I'd come down to Bright Street every day to play ball. To play with the same guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're the only girl playing? And, yeah. And also, I used to play with them up there in Greenville. But I had a better chance down, the, down Bright Street. You know what I mean? I, I was more familiar with them, you know? And those kids up there didn't play ball like those kids down there, you know, down Bright Street. You right, know? so they were better players? Huh? They were better players? Yeah, because the kids up in that area, it wasn't like they got, had the team together or played anything. It's just that we'd have maybe four or five, you know, maybe yeah, four sure. on a team or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know? But the Bright Street ones, that was almost Bright organized, Street. more organized? No, or? yeah, well, it was more of us, and then we'd go play York Street or Montgomery Street. You know, we were the bright there street. No, there was no league, but you were kind of setting no. up your own kind of hey, no, let's it go was play just over street. there. Yeah, sure, it was just street. It was just street street game. What kind of equipment did you have? Well, you know, we'd have a bat. You know, yeah. My father, my father, when he said to me when I was nine years old, Lewis, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a baseball player and I want to be a cop. You know? I'm laughing now. No, Did he laugh? no. He didn't yeah, laugh. he said, well, no, he, he didn't. Really. He said, well, Dolores, if you can imagine it, you'll be it. You know? But that, I always felt, I, I, I love to play baseball, you know? But I, like I said, they also took us to the games and sure. everything, you know? But girls didn't play baseball. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> But those men who used to play catch with me even encouraged me more. Sure. You know, I loved it. And I loved the feeling that they, 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 I don't know, they made me feel like I was somebody. You know what I'm saying? And I did admire. And I, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't feel like I'm, um, what do you say, like bragging or something. This was my life, you know? 
What did you want to do? And I, realize I you wanted to be young. a cop. Well, yeah, you want to be a cop. <laughs> I mean, a baseball player. All right. So now you're getting through high school. You're still oh. in Jersey. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Are you playing ball at all during that period? Of time? Yeah. Now, now I have to tell you. Okay. So one day I'm throwing a ball against the. the I see. I was telling the other fellow. That's okay, why yeah. maybe. Yeah. I was throwing the ball against the thing, and here comes my gang, right? And they're all together, and the guy said, where are you going? They said, Al Santora put, a, put um, an ad in the paper, and he's starting up teams. Al Santora was a professional ball, uh, was a professional fighter, right? And uh, he, he wasn't fighting anymore, you know? But he wanted to, uh, there were a lot of kids in the area, you know? And he wanted to keep them out of trouble the boys. So he was going to start a baseball team, right? And, and then it was going to be organized type thing, right? And I was about 12 at, at this year time, and I had moved to Greenville. And I, I was back down there. So this kid, we, we all had, they all had nicknames, you know? This kid was Anthony Amateur, we called him Fish, you know? But anyway, he said, hey, D, he said, come on, you coming with us? And I said, where are you going? He said, Al Santor is getting this team together. He put it in the paper. And I said, oh, I said, he won't take me. And Fish, now he's, you know, he's a, a kid that, you know, would be glad. Why would he want me, if he, you know what I'm saying, to go there? But that's how they accepted me. And he said, uh, what do you mean they won't take you? I said, of course, I'm a girl. He said, come on, you know. So I go along with them. And out of the 11 of boys and me, I made the team. <laughs> and they weren't, they weren't mad about it anything. They, they just accepted it. That's, you know, like I say, they, you know, even those kids treated me, you know. There was no bit about jealousies or anything like that. Did, did, you, did you have access to newspapers, radio? Did you know about professional baseball at all? I mean, oh, yeah. You Mom, the games and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. But, Mama had, the, she had a little Emerson radio. It was red. I'll never forget it. And she used to have the games on every day. So baseball was all through your childhood. Something yeah, because we didn't have toys. That. Yeah, but you're a girl. You can't play but baseball. But there were three boys too in the house, the family. Oh, you know, they went sport. And my father used to take my brother on the trains with him, and it used to annoy me. Why can't you take me? And I couldn't understand that. There's all men there, Dolores. You know, and they sleeping on the freight trains. You know, and I used to. That used to annoy me. How come I can't go? And they tell me I'm a girl. So I could do anything a boy can, but I didn't realize, you know, with, like they had to go to the bathroom or something like that. And they never told me, and it used to bother me, you know? And I'd say, hey, Daddy, how come you don't? Because my father was very close for me. See, the brothers and sisters before me, that was a year, a year and a half old, you know, difference. When they had me, right? They didn't have another one for three years and 11 months, right? So in that time, I mean, daddy's little girl and, you know. Well, you were a handful. How can they handle another one after you, right? <laughs> I was born, I tell you, I was born on Easter Sunday. Yeah. I was the only baby born in Hudson County on Easter Sunday. And, you know, when, when they say, hey, well, you know, I'm going to do, I'm, that's, that's an, an omen to me. You know, God was always there that I was the only, and my, my mother, they wanted to name me Margaret Mary, it, Margaret after my father's sister, and Mary after my mother's sister. And I was born in a Catholic hospital with the nuns, and she said, on a day like this, you ought to name a Dolores after the, uh, <laughs> Am I boring you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't blame yeah. me. <laughs> um, am I doing all right? You know, so is it fine. all right? You're doing fine. You're doing fine. But anyway, they named me Dolores after the seven swords that pierced Our Lady's heart, you know? And I used to tell Mama, hey, Mama, am I, are you getting one of those swords, you know? Because she never knew where I was, you know? When uh, in, in high school, 
Okay. You went to high school. I went to a girls' academy. A girls' academy. Yeah, my mother. My mother. There's no baseball in girls' academy. There was nothing. We never had any sports, but we the state come up where you had to have like the physical education, and it was an old club, uh, our school. You know, it was beautiful school, but the the ceilings were low, and those girls used to hate it because all we'd play is uh, what's that game? You take the it's like a, a volleyball. And <clears throat> you, you hit them, you know? And it twirls around like the, the Yeah, like it was a circle. It was like pole? a circle. No, oh, it was no, a no, circle. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. You're also moving in front of the light. So okay. Sit forward. Okay. All right. See, I'm here in motion. No, no, it's not you. It's me. I'm, I'm oh. making the move. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. No, it was, uh, what the heck they called it? Was it wasn't tetherball. No, no, you'd have to hit them. Okay. You'd have All to right. hit them with the ball. They okay. used to hit it. Dodgeball? Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Sure, Dodge we ball. had that too. But it was yeah. like in a circle type okay, thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. You, if you got hit, you grab the ball and then, then you, you go to hit somebody yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. That's about the, the gist of it. But they used to hate me because when I hit them with the ball, oh, they were real feminine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I had yeah. a lot of femininity too. Sure. I mean, I wasn't like a. I didn't act like a boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I but was you've been practicing all that time since you were a kid, throwing and all that kind of stuff. So you, they weren't used to that sort of thing. No, and they, they were all like doctor's daughters and this uh, and that and yeah. everything. Like I said, I was the, the peon in the, in the <laughs> thing, you know? But these well, how men. did baseball come back into your life then? If you're at okay. okay, Al Santora yeah, right. gets me on his team. Right, right. So uh, there was a cop patrolling the area. And he used to stop and watch the games, you know? And he saw me, and he called me over, and he said, do you know Dolores Mayo? And I said, no. He said, she just lived down here on Brundick Street. And by the way, Brundick Street is where Frank Sinatra's wife lived. Which one? The first one. No, <laughs> oh, the first okay. one. Okay. He was from Hoboken. He okay, lived yeah, in Hoboken, yeah, sure. yeah, which is yeah. right next to Jersey okay. City. Yeah. But he met the, met, met the girl, and it was right in the... Uh, Brundick Street was all where the Italians would have all their their stands like outside, the fish market, the whole bit, you know. But she lived there, and then they had like funeral parlors. She lived over a funeral park. But anyway, he said, the, this cop, he said, do you know Dolores Mayo? And I said, no. He said, um, she plays ball with some team out in Garfield. And I was, I must have been about 14 and, you know, may, no. I, I don't know, 13, 14, you know, because I, I played for a while. And Al, and Al Santoro told the boy, I don't want anybody, you know, in other words, uh, just because she's a girl, she's a better player than all of you, he told him. So don't, you know, so in other words, when it's time to catch a catch with her, you know, because, which I thought that was good because, see, the, the other boys accepted me from the block. And here I'm, I'm in new territory. And, you know, when you're a kid growing up in a city, that's your territory, you know? Okay. So I said, no, I don't know. He said, well, would you mind if I... She plays with a, with a team out there. He said, would you be interested, you know, in talking with her? I said, yeah. He said, well, do you mind if I go talk to her first and tell her about you? I said, no, you know. So she comes over one time to the field where we were with Al Santora. And she tells me... And she said, we have a girls' team that we go to play out in Garfield. It's sponsored by the mayor of, uh, of Garfield, Mayor Belli, you know, and all that stuff. And I said, no, the only thing I want to ask you, are you sure it's baseball? And she said, yeah, it's baseball. And I never, yeah, you know? Not softball, because I didn't play softball, you know? So she said, no. So I said, okay, you know, I'll go out there. Because I figured, hey, if that if they've got a game, that's better for me, you know. Your parents were supportive of this. It was okay with them for you to just go off somewhere. And yeah, play baseball? yeah, you know, because I loved it so much, okay. you know. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, no, my mother was supportive. And okay. I mean, All right. you know, mom, I got a chance to go out there. Well, okay, but I didn't have the money to go. My mother didn't have the money. We never had a car, you know. So I washed. I used to scrub this lady's floors, the four rooms, you know, for a dollar. And I had to take a bus from Greenville. Now, Greenville is the section in Jersey City. It's far out from downtown. 
I had to take the bus to get downtown to get the train, right? And then the train would let me off at uh, in Passaic, and then I had to take another train from Passaic to get to Garfield. Now, I had a dollar. I must have had like 16 cents left. It sounds funny, don't it? I mean, you know, the prices. But then when we'd go play a game, and um, afterwards, the old, there were much older girls than me there, but they'd have cars there. They would drive us home, and they'd stop to eat. And I always used to feel bad because I didn't have any money, you know, to stop and buy a hamburger. And they said, you know, well, they didn't know that I was called Pickles, you know. They didn't know that. They called me Dolores. We had three Doloreses on the team, right? And I, I never, because I didn't, like I said, that was for Bright Street and that was for the men in the Bright Street shop, you know. And so anyway, you know, I, I'd say, no, I'm, you know, my mother will have supper when I go home and we all eat together, you know. But I used to feel bad, you know. I don't know how to explain yeah, well, it to you. No, you're, you're very clear. You're very clear. And, and it, it's important that, that you get these details. I, I'm really enjoying this very much. Now, you didn't get paid to play, right? No, no, uh, no. Okay. So you're just doing this for fun. But you're working. You're scrubbing floors. You're taking trains. You're taking buses. All because you just love to play Yeah. Baseball. And see, you know, when you grew up in a city like that, at that time, it, it wasn't dangerous. Sure. It yeah. wasn't dangerous. Yeah. Now, you're playing on this team. It's all girls. It's all girls. And it's overhand baseball. And they were all much older than me. Yeah. yeah. They were all much yeah. older. And, I'm, you know, I'll never forget when I come home after the first, I said, you know, Mama, I said, it was so funny. The first baseman had gray hair. <laughs> I don't know how old she was. But, what uh, position were you playing at this time? Well, I, I was, well, I was a pitcher, okay. you know, but he had me on different you know, positions like when we would go practice too, sure, you know. Sure. He had me under, but I, I had a good arm, and yeah. so I, I was a pitcher, okay. you know. Now, now his okay. daughter yep. was also on the team, mm -hmm. right? And he was the one that saw in the sports news that they were taking tryouts for this league. What year is this, roughly? Well, well, um, let me see. I was 12. Uh, I was born in 35, 45, 46, 47. Okay, so the war already started. The war is already over. Oh, yeah. yeah. The war, I think, was over. Wasn't it over in well, 46, 46, yeah. 46, yeah. yeah. The war was over. So the war is over with the men are coming back. Yeah. But you're hearing about the No, team. But, but, yeah. You're hearing about a team. Yeah. What team was it? Well, I didn't know at the time. Right. All I know is that he... He, he was trying to get his daughter. Yeah, Ian, she was he, two years older than But he me. thought of you. No, oh, anybody okay. on a team. So he would take us out there. Yeah. But see, Joni, she had, uh, he, he took her out. He didn't take the ones that were, you know, younger. You had to be 16. To join the league. To join okay. the league. Okay. So anybody else. Some of these girls in the team were like in their 20s. I was sure, just sure. 12, yeah. 13 years yeah, old, yeah, you know. Yeah. But they, you know, I mean, and they, but they were But that's your first introduction. I mean, now you know that it's a professional girls team. They're yeah. telling you that, right? Yeah. They're telling you there's a girls team. Yeah. What, how did you react to that? I mean, did you want to be that or you still want to be a cop or what did what'd you want well, to be? Well, no, I, I, I can't be a cop until I get older. Well, you sure. Know? I was still, baseball was the first ah. thing. Baseball was the first thing. I mean, even with school, like I said, I went to this Catholic academy yeah. only, right? You know, and they were tough, you know? Just and, uh, <laughs> they, you know, religion class, they ask a question, the answer was two and a half pages long, <laughs> and you had to give it back to them, yeah. wrote memory, you know? Sure. Sure. But I was good at remembering things, you know? So let's get back to now that the, the, the coach, his daughter, is old enough to go to this team. Did she make the team? Yeah, Joni Berger, she was second base, wow. and she was a beautiful girl. She had that Italian, I was always fast, kid, you know, and, and she had that, that bra you know, in other words, the tan, the Italian, Italian. Yeah, yeah. and she had these beautiful, she was a beautiful mm -hmm. girl, and she was a good ball player. So you know? she goes off to play. Yeah. See, he takes a bunch out that were, okay. would go, you know, in other yeah, words, try yeah, out. Yeah. But now you're still back. 
baseball. Oh yeah. And now you know, but you now you now know there is a professional baseball. Yeah. Is that something you wanted to do when you turned? Yes. Oh. Yes. You know. So when I was old enough, he had told me. He said, "When you're 16, I'll take take you out too." You know. So what happened when you turned 16? They took me out. They, but we, you know, they had these old Willie Jeeps at the time. They were, and they had the wood in the floor. They were straight seats like that. He had that Jeep. I guess he could fit about ten or twelve in there, you know. But they were the most uncomfortable. I could sleep any place if I could sleep in a tenement house, right? I used to sleep on the boards going out, right on the boards. How long did it take to get there? Oh. We drove, well, we drove from New Jersey to Illinois. We went to Rockford. We went to Rockford. What was your first, and, and I know we're going back a ways here. No, but that's okay. What was your first impression? I mean, you're driving I, all, 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 I, cheap, and you show up. We, we showed up, and it was late at night when we got there, and we, we go right to the ballpark. I never in my life saw all these girls in uniforms playing. It, it was like... Like I said, I played with the boys, and it was beautiful, and they were so good, you know? They were really good. Oh, well, then then the next day, you know, uh, we're out. We're out. No, wait a minute. I, I'm jumping. Okay. It was when he brought us back. In other words, I had to go home to graduate, okay. you know? Yeah. I was out there for the, for the, the tryouts. The tryouts. I had I had to go home to graduate, and I graduated when I was sixteen, yeah. right? And and then I went out again, and the and uh, how the heck did I get out? Oh, they drove us out. They well, let's let's go out. back to that first time. You get out there, you know, in the movie. I know the movie has good stuff and it has some Hollywood stuff. Yeah. But that moment when Gina Davis and, and, and the, 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 they come out. Alley. When they were running, when they were running for the train was, oh yeah, that that that, you the train know, the, was very much like that for you. Yeah, well, no, we we went out in the car, right, you know, right. we went out in the car. But I guess what I was thinking is when you, we went out for tryouts. Yeah, but you were, you were saying that you got out there and all these girls in uniforms. You know, that was an amazing it, moment. It, it was amazing. It was oh, it God. was my dream. You know what I mean? Oh, I hope so I make it. So what were the tryouts it. like? What, what were the tryouts? Oh, they were tough, you know, yes. and I'm fair oh, yeah. skin, right? Yeah. And uh, I'm out there. Well, he, they, they worked a lot with me. They had me on all the bases and everything, and then the pitching. And by this time, the back of my legs are all sunburned, and the, they had a, a chaperone, you know, and she would use baby oil and mix iodine in it and put it on me. I was so raw, right? And it was so bad. And now he, the manager's worker, he worked for hours with me, just, you know, on the different things. And then he saw the back of my legs. He says, my God, he said, you know. And, and you know, they get tight, and then when you, you know. But I wasn't complaining. I wouldn't care if they bled. <laughs> you know, I wanted to play. And then he said to me, oh, he said, you you know, you're all somebody. Now listen to this. Go down to the pit and, and learn how to learn how to slide, you know, can you slide? I, I knew how to slide, you know, watching the, the fame, the big leagues play and everything. And like I said, when he, when they asked about, can you throw, can you make, you know, when we went to the tour team, I could do it. I didn't know if I could do it, but hey, I'm willing to, I know if I try it, I'll do it, you know? So I get down to the, I get down to the sliding thing and I'm full of grease and I get it and they used, they use the shavings from uh, uh, wood shavings in the pit, right? Well, I, can you imagine what happened? Well, when they saw that, they said, oh, Dolores, go shower. <laughs> it was great, you know, but I, I was, you know. So how did you, 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 you did the tryouts? Yeah. Drive, had, drive back home. I had, to, I had to go back to graduate. Yeah, you graduated yeah. from high school. So... So you got a letter in the mail, or what happened? Yeah, no, they told me in the beginning that, that you, I they, made they it. They accepted you? Yeah, they... For what team? Rockford. For Rockford Peaches? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So now, how do you get from home to... 
back to them? Yeah. They sent me a check for my man plane. Did you ride in a plane before? I don't think I did, no. Is this the first time you ever rode in a yeah, plane? Yeah, I was riding the plane, yeah. Your parents must be pretty happy at this point. I mean, you're getting oh, paid. Yeah. You're getting paid. I know it, you know? And then when I got paid, I used to send my check home because I need, you know, I worked in a hospital at 12 washing dishes and waiting on the, the doctors, the doctors that, uh, the interns. You know, they had a special dining room, you know, they had about eight or ten, and they were like from Guatemala, and, and they used to call me Lola, you know, and it did to her. And, you know, it got to the point where they wanted to take me out, you know, but I, 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 I you know, I wasn't going out, you know. <laughs> I hadn't gone out with boys or anything. Not that I didn't want to, but I, you know, I just, they were too old. A, a brain surgeon that worked there went to my mother and asked me, brain surgeon. And he wanted to know if he could take Dolores out. And Mama says to me, Dr. Katiti said he was a famous brain surgeon. And he wanted to know if he could take Dolores out, you know. And I said, Mama, I said, he's an old man. Bill to me, he was old, you know. I was just a young kid. No, well, I. How old were you when you, when you got in your lot to teach her? 16. You're already, okay, so you're 16. Yeah, I was 16. Your parents had to sign for it, right, to let you go. Yeah, I guess so, yeah, you know. Yeah, because you had to be 18. Yeah, they, they, they did, you know. What year was this? 52. Okay, so you didn't have to go through 45, the, 45, 50. You didn't have to go through that charm school and all that kind of stuff? No, they didn't have that. Not at that time. They yeah. didn't have that. Well, what was it like? Or let, let's remember. But the funny said. part about yeah. even being a tomboy, I had a very, a, a lot of girlish things. Well, sure. I wasn't forward. I went to Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to be. Yeah. Sure. You, you know. But my question is, you're 16 years old. You're now part of a professional baseball team. What was it, the first that, that, Because I was just so happy I was there. <laughs> you know? Well, you wanted to be a cop, you want to be a baseball player, you're now a baseball player at 16 years old. Yeah, it was 16, and, you know, in and yeah, around, sure. around that area. Well, like, what was the first, you're, you're playing with girls that are in their 20s, right? 18, oh, 19, yeah. 20 years old. So what was, what was the reaction of these girls that you're suddenly showing No, well, they were used to that because, like, Joni went out when she was 16. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, there were a lot of Did young... Did you feel welcomed? Oh, yeah. You were a rookie. I was a rookie, yeah, but, you know, and then I... I in other words, I, I was never, like, hey, they were the profession, you know, they were the... I had respect for older people. I was brought up that way, you know? So I had no problem, and, and they, you know, any new rookies to come in, they say, hey, rookie, you know, get this, get that there. I do whatever they told me, you know? How did you like the uniform? Nice. You know, it, it was kind of funny. I You're mean, I was Catholic used to... Catholic school girl, and you didn't think that the skirts looked Oh, that didn't funny? bother me. Really? I, I always wore dungarees <laughs> after school, you know. We, in, in the Catholic school, we had the uniforms yeah, and everything. Sure. I, yeah, I had a little patch over here. Tell yeah, me the SDA, St. Yeah. Dominic's yeah, Academy. Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dominican school was me. Yeah, yeah. I was Dominican. Oh, yeah, well yeah. Dominican. That in high school. Yeah, and they were tough. <laughs> You know? The penguins would beat your hand if you didn't do something oh, right. Oh, in the eighth grade oh, down in the grammar school. Sure. You know what happened? <clears throat> we moved from Bright Street up to uh, Seaview Avenue. And I was, uh, was it the seventh? I loved my seventh grade teacher because she was great. I guess in her, in her early years, she, she was one. She was athletic and stuff like that, you know. And I was the youngest one in that class. Remember I tell you, I got, mm -hmm. you know, trans, uh, yep. you know. You tried to stay behind, but they wouldn't let you. They wouldn't let me, you know. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had friends. I mean, as young as it was, you know. But anyway, she, she treated me so good. And she was doing the birthdays one time, and I didn't know what she, and she's, oh, she said, Dolores, you're the youngest one. I said, no, sister, there's five more brothers and sisters home after me. But she meant in the class, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> Let's get back to the first also, season. Okay. Also, yep, yep. when I was in grammar school, yeah. right, I'd, I'd still be playing catch at lunchtime. And, and the, the men, the whistle, 
Dixon's was the pencil shop. He said, Pickles, the, the last bell, the last signal from Dixon's, which meant I was late for school. And I'd run two blocks around, and I was supposed to meet in the courtyard. Everybody lines up in the courtyard. Well, I never made the courtyard because I was always the last uh, Dixon's doo doo, you know, for them to. And I'd run around the block. And by this time, I'm sweating and everything. And Sister James May, I'll never forget her because, like I said, the other ones weren't as linear. And she'd see me coming in. She knew I was playing ball, you know, and she said, Dolores, she said, it's a little warm. Why don't you go down to the girls' room? And she'd let me well, cool my face off. She was so good to me. But like I said, I always feel lucky because all of these people, they treated me. They, they at least treated me like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was the first season like? Oh, I was in awe, you know? Your pitcher? Or are you just sitting on the bench? No, I, I sat on the bench, but it put me in like, you know, to, to see. And plus, at the time, which I didn't realize, because the league was, you know, uh, how would you say? Um, I, I can't say the television was coming in at the time. That's really what, but what people, was. But people were not coming in the same kind of numbers. Not, apparently not like they were. Yeah, so they were working hard at yeah, the, sure. you know. Promote and, it and get people to yeah, come. Yeah, the yeah. people to come. So the rookies, I mean, he he was good, Bill Allington. That's who we had as manager. And he wasn't a professional ball player. Okay. This is the first season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was with him for the three years. Oh, okay. I was right. with him for the three years. Now, how many people were from Southern California? <laughs> no. no, I had Joni. Joni so was, there was you Joni. had somebody you already knew. Joni was the one whose father oh, was the, yeah. yeah. So she was on the team? Yeah, she was so on the team. So you felt a little bit comfortable. Yeah, but now she was a rookie. She was in there two years, oh, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. So you stuck with the, the, the one. Then we had very strict rules. You know, you had to be in a curfew. You know, um, uh, you had to always be dressed like a lady when you weren't playing ball. You didn't have a charm school, but you still had the rules. Oh, we had the rules, So you, yeah. you're used to wearing blue jeans. Yeah, but if I had to wear a dress, I wore it. Okay. I wore because I wasn't going to go be sent home. <laughs> you know, I'd do anything to stay there. So the first season, you're sitting on the bench most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Warming up the, warming I, up the, what, were you, what were you doing? Well, you you pitch uh, like bat and practice and okay. stuff like right, that, right. you know. So you, yeah. And you'd, you'd pick up balls, you know, and all that stuff. But were you traveling? Uh, yeah, I traveled with them. Yeah. Well, where are you going? No, well, we the went first to season. The, first the first season. season. We went to Fort Wayne. We went to Kalamazoo. We played against all these other teams. Mm -hmm. You know, these are girls from all over the country. Yeah, you have an accent. Oh, you know. Did that have any effect on? Oh your yeah. Team? Well, you tell know. us about that. I mean, well, it's, it's hard to say because where do you where do you live? You know, I live in Jersey City. You know. <laughs> But I've talked that way all my life, and I'm not going to change it. I mean, I, you know, even, I've been in Deming, New Mexico for 32 years, and I still like walk, talk like Jersey City. I don't put on. I don't try to, you know. What about the other accents, though? You heard girls from other places. Did you guys talk about that at all? About, about accents? Oh, they, they, I always felt that they talked nicer than me. <laughs> but I'm me, and I'm not going to put on I, what I'm trying to get at is that your your young girls from all over the place, most of the girls that I've interviewed basically lived in a small little area. That was their home in that place. And then all of a sudden you're traveling around. The and big city. Girls, yeah, to different people. I mean, what did you guys talk about? Did you, did you talk about the fact that you met somebody from, from uh, North Carolina or you met somebody from up Michigan or whatever? I mean, was there any conversation? Where are you from? Oh, well, I knew when we first on it. We weren't allowed to talk to the other teams. There was no fraternizing. There was no fraternizing. That's why I didn't get to know the girls until they had these reunions, you know? So you only knew your teammates. Yeah, yeah. Did you play for different teams? No, I okay. only played always for Rockford. Play. Okay. Right. Played for Rockford. So the first season, you're 
picking up stuff. You're doing whatever they tell you to do. I do. You're on the bench. I, I was a very obedient child. Okay. Home. End of the first season, what happened? You went home? Yeah, you went home. And what'd you do? Couldn't wait to get back. <laughs> I went home, I had a job, I got a job in Western Electric, and you want to hear something funny, right? I worked in Western Electric, and they were, they were you know, they big, big offices, you know, You're like not even the, 18 yet, right? Yeah, I was just about eight. About eight I, I, I was working since I was 12, because I worked in a yeah, hospital, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. doing it. So I was used to work, you know, and you had to help the family, you know, but I, I worked Oh, I worked in a plumber place. I worked different, you know. And if I didn't like it, I quit. <laughs> but I got to work. work. It was good to work in Western Electric. The pay was good. You forty dollars. You worked forty hours. You get the, like a dollar an hour, you know. But anyway, they they had a, they had this big room where it was all girls there, you know. Funny. Well, they put me in with forty engineers that do the draft things, you know. So I had to take care of uh, these big draft things. People would call up and they want copies and so on and so on. You know, the place was a mess when I got in there, right? And the boss we had, she handled, she was the bo their boss, but she was also she. my boss. She. Wow. She was the boss of the, of the girl section. Oh, okay, you know, yeah, it was okay, like, okay. like typing. I, yeah, I took yeah. commercial in, in high school because I figured I had to go to work, you know? Sure. And um, so I had commercial course. So I knew I knew typing and all that stuff, you know. And when I was in school typing, the nun used to, you know, because I I loved mechanics, you know. And I'd have the, the typewriter apart. <laughs> I'd be taking it apart, you know. But I, I was able to have a lot of, you know, my coordination was very good. I was a good typist. But I had to figure out how this thing works, so I had to take, Dolores, would you put the typewriter back together again, you know? So now you've done one season as a baseball player, Western, second season, they call you back. Yeah, yeah. How that, was the second season? It was even better than the first, you Well, know? did you play? Yeah, I played. I think I, I don't know how many, yeah, I guess I played about 10 games or okay. 20 games. You know, because I had a 10 and 10 thing, as you know? As a pitcher? Yeah, as a pitcher. So you're like the backup pitcher, second season? No, no, no. He, oh, he really? would put me in, wow. you know? But uh, I, I went in, I started, you know? Then it, the other spots where I'd go in and I'd take over, sure. you know? But I was good. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. I'm not being... I'm not being, uh, what are no, you? No, the record stands. I mean, you're either good or you're not good, so you're no, good. No, <laughs> but I knew I was good. Yeah. I had good coordination. I had good, we went to get, we went to get um, spikes, right? And we go in the, the store to get the spikes, sports store to get the spikes. My mother always made sure, I mean, aside from food for us, that we had good shoes, right? And she'd take us over to Wanamaker's. We had one pair of shoes a year, right? And it was Oxford's, you know? And we'd go over and we'd get fitted for the shoes and it'd be right and everything. And then they would use them for school. See, we couldn't use them to September. She'd take us like in, J in July, August over there. And they'd send them all home only because we didn't have to pay the tax if they sent them home, right? <laughs> smart lady, that mom of yours. My mother was smart. Yeah. She knew how to handle things. Yeah. yeah, she was smart, and she was a good woman, you know? And um, so... You went to get spikes. You went to get spikes. We went to... No, but I'm t I have okay. to tell you right. about my younger years. Okay. Because my mother made sure all our feet was always well taken care of, right? Now, we go to get spikes, and we were in... I, I don't know whether we were in... Fort Wayne or where the heck we were when we got him. And the guy takes me those things. And he calls the other three uh, uh, sellers, so, yeah. come over here. This woman has perfect feet with perfect balance. I said, that's my, my, my mother always took care of us. You know? I mean, some women you see, uh, you see them in those uh, gossip papers, they show pictures of like, Oprah Winfrey, honest to God, they look like they grow on another toe. They have like bunions. There isn't a mark on my foot. 
Even to this day, my doctor says to me, you know, you have nice feet out there. Just because my mother took care of them. You know? <laughs> so, second season, you're playing more ball now. Finish with the second season. Come back to work? Yeah, come back to work. Same place? I don't know if I went to the same place or not. Okay. Because, I, like I said, I worked different, different sure. places. It might have been the last year that I was in that Western Lake, but, but right. the thing, oh, Wait a minute! Yeah. I, I'm, uh, it's leading up to baseball in this yeah. in this place, yeah. right? So they put me in this room with all these things. The men, I, the men, I got. I always get along good with the men, you know. And so anyway, the girls out there, they used to tease and they used to call me up and say, "Oh, would you please? We need an order for that." And I'd make the new order, the order out, right? And nobody come and get it, you know. It was them teasing me because. When the, the, our boss, she'd come in and teach me, and I'd be sitting there reading the Daily News, doing the coursework puzzle, and she'd say, what are you doing? You know, the place was a mess when I got the file system, the, the, the big draft things were stuck down in the thing. I took everything out, and I cleaned it all, and I made it all nice and neat. And she said, don't you have any work to do? I said, no, check me. She, oh, she was mad because I had everything right. You know? <laughs> Let's get back to baseball for a moment. No, All no, right. I got to finish this. <laughs> okay. Because they were calling me up all the time, you know? So after a while, when I caught on to them, I hung up. So one day I get this call, and she says, my name is Frances Turbo, and I'm from the, uh, what's my line? Now, now, do you want to hear the story, or you want to sure, get back I to baseball? I'll hear the story. <laughs> you got to watch your hand. Okay. okay. And so I think it's them, so I hang up, right? And the woman calls back again. And I hey, they think they're smart, right? I hang up. So I get a call from my mother. She said, Dolores, what's the matter? She said, this lady from What's My Line called up, and she wanted to talk to you, and I gave you extension. She just called me back, and she told me, you're hanging up. <laughs> Oh, I said, Mom, I thought that it was the girls out in the other office because they're always teasing me, you know? So the lady calls up, and, you know, I had to apologize. To and they wanted me over at, at What's My Line. Well, two reporters in Jersey City had, you know. It's in New York, right? It was in New York. Yeah, it was yeah, in New sure, York. Yeah. And uh, it was wintertime, you know? And they had to, uh, I used to babysit. See, I did a lot of that, too. I used to babysit. And one of them was a reporter, you know? So he wrote an article when I made the team, you know, and stuff like that. Sure. And uh, he notified them, and I didn't even know, know he notified them. And they called me. But so then I went over to him. Be William Bendix was on the, oh, yeah. on the, on the you know, they come sure. in, they sign their name yeah, and yeah, everything, sure, yeah. you know? And uh, Dorothy Kilgallen and John Daly and, um, oh, um, I, I loved him. The guy with the black hair that used to, oh, Steve Allen. Oh, yeah. We were with Mama, you always used guy. to watch him, you yeah, know? Was, and guy. so I, w I was on, like, the latter part of the show. Well, you know, you, they had to guess me, right, you know, and everything. And somebody said, uh, maybe you saw, I, I had a pretty blue dress on with little pom-poms, you know? And I, see, that was my, from playing ball. Like I said, you, you know, you, you dress nice. You see, when, if I was home, then I'd probably have dungarees on, you know. But anyway, um, they didn't guess that they, they were running out of time, so they threw it over. But they didn't really guess, but they, they got close, you know. And then he flipped the, flipped the thing, and then they all talked. They, they were, like, so intrigued, you know. And you were identified as a professional baseball player. Lars, let go of that cord. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's the voice. You notice he does the same thing to me, right? You, you heard no, no, voice. I don't mind I'm because <laughs> I, you know, the nuns. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I could go on and on. I tell you, I was you a tour. You have to make a bus, don't you? You have to get on a bus to go to the That's right. Oh, I, oh, what yeah. Time, what time is the game? 10.15, they got to be there. Oh, my gosh. Right. I thought it was 10.30. 10.30? 10.30? All right, let's... So we have let's... to be done by 10.15 here. Okay. Are you ready to right. go? You mean we ca I can't come back? <laughs> <laughs> you can come back? Sure. Could you, could you do me a favor?
favor and check out outside if, if uh, Jim is out there, if he's getting nervous or anything like that. <laughs> Fourth season. Three seasons. Three seasons. Played. Third season now. Did you play more? Yeah, 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 I played more. But like I said, um, I, I would have loved to play even more than what I did, you know, but I was a rookie, you know, and I felt like I was going to be a rookie all my life. Well, but now that leads me to another question. At a very young age, you wanted to play baseball. You wanted to be a cop, all right? Yeah, but see, I wasn't thinking of it I, that I, time, I know, the cop. I know, I know. But the point I'm trying to make is that these are both careers that girls did not have an opportunity to play. But you got encouraged to play baseball. You played baseball. Did you at all think, first season, second season, third season, that this was going to be your professional career? I would have loved it, but I also knew that the thing was dwindling. You knew that? Yeah. How oh, yeah. Because they you know? talked How'd you know? Because they talked about it. They talked about it, you know, and they tried so hard to keep the fans. Television was coming in. People, you know, stayed home. You know, I knew it, you know, and it, it, it just, oh, you know, it broke my heart to think I wouldn't be able to continue doing like the girls, some of those girls were on from the beginning. You know? No, but it, I had to accept it. If that's the way it is, that's the way it is. How did you know that it ended? How did they tell you? How did you we know? We were there. What do you mean you were we there? We were there for the last year. We were told there was, there's no more. You know, there'd be no more. What did you decide to do? I didn't. Bill, ha Bill Allington decided to pick an all-star team to go around you know, to go around and play the men. And that's when you got. Yeah. And you got it. That yeah, that's in you other ways we had game. we had gone home, but it was like that sure. was the end of the world. But he was was working it up, and in other words, we didn't get paid by. We got paid by the gate. We didn't have a salary, you know, and they had to take out the expenses for the traveler. We had a car. Joni Berger had a car. And she had like five or six of them in it, and he had a station wagon. Now, this is the first time you've actually played with other girls now that were in different teams. Because remember, you said yeah. before, it was always restricted yeah, that that's you didn't, couldn't fraternize, couldn't talk with yeah. other teams. Now you're playing with these same yeah. people you played against. Yeah, yeah, that's when I get to know them. I, I never talked to them before. But there was Joni, there was a lot of us from, more from uh, Rockford. Let's see, there was Joni. I can't think now. Who it's okay. Did, I, I got you a few know? more questions for you. You got ten minutes before you got to get back to your. That I'm. That you yeah, throw me yeah, out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You had enough you're for the me. You're the one that wants to go to the game. I'm, I'll oh, sit here for the rest no, of the game. No, I know. You know. I know. You want to get rid of me? No. I'm just going to go all afternoon. <laughs> okay. Don't waste all time right. doing that. Let's right. talk here. What? The league ends. You start a new career. Well, I had to go back home. You know, and I went to work. I don't know what that. What I was. Did oh, I was working in. A, I was working. No, not that. Not then. Not then. Everything in my life fell in place. I was working in the violation bureau. I got a job in the violation bureau, right? And uh, they they were looking for. You know, it's funny. The, the, he was the Italian boss that we had there, and it was right in the precinct, in the seventh precinct. Where the, that was the main headquarters, you know, for the cops. And so the, the, his, the, the lady that, that hired them, you know, or anything, she said she got, a new, uh, she got a new girl for you. They were looking for a new girl. And she, she said, um, she's a ball player. He said, I don't need a ball player. I need a cop, you know. <laughs> I need a, a, a typist or something like that. And so I was born into an interview, and he took right to me. Well, what he didn't know is you're both a bell player and a typist and a cop and... No, way, I, I wasn't a cop. Not I, that I was, yeah. yeah. Okay. I but wasn't... Right. All those years after the league folded, you went on, you had your own life. Mm -hmm. You did all kinds of different things, okay? Did you ever talk about being a ball player? Um... Well, when, 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 when I was working in Western Electric, when I was on television. Afterwards, afterwards, afterwards. No, in other words, I went in there, and okay. that's what I was the rookie of okay. the year. Yeah. Okay. 
in, in 52, you know? And that was the, the thing. So then when I come back to work, yeah. then they, they knew it. Knew, they knew, they knew okay. you know? But Did I didn't, you, uh, you know, it, I, I don't ever remember saying, oh, I was a ball player because, they, you know, they'd say to me, what are you, some kind of a nut or something, you know? I, I did a job when I was a cop, and I was I had to be a decoy, and that sucker grabbed me, you know, and I just I got right out of his. I was very, very, very uh, agile, agile, yeah. and I I knew movement, and I was a good fighter. Like I said, I, they let me down in yeah. a boxer, you know. Anytime we got in fights, which we did get a lot of fights, you know, Montgomery Street or this or that. As a cop. No, no, I'm player. talking as a kid. <laughs> oh, as a kid. You know, <laughs> with the, with when you're playing to get ball against them, and if there was a fight, you know, yeah. I I always won. <laughs> and it it wasn't that they were pulling punches; they yeah. were just throwing just as. But I knew how to box. Yeah. You know, the men from the fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> when did you? The movie came out. Uh, A League of Their Own. When did you see that? I was part of it. You were. And I had a part in it. Oh yeah. You know? And like I say, I, I, I was never I always I was taught always to know your place, you know? So if if there's celebrities there, I'd love to talk to them. But I never rush up to them and you know, like like the, the word they use, suck up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I never did that. I always stood in the background, you know? But you got chosen for this movie? Huh? You get chosen, and it's like, well, what happened? They call you up. Yeah. And you send you no, they all the, all the girls, all the all over Penny Marshall, everything. I stood in yeah. the back taking pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And she called me, you know, and um, she said to my roommate one day, she said, and then, you know, when they gave you the, the shirts, you know, because they they had them and the uh, what do you call the clothing the dressing department, you know, they put them down. Everybody scrambles like. Bargain basement. I, I was enough for that, you know. I'd wait, and I always had them too. The size is too big, you know. Over here, over here. He's oh, not here. He's okay. Not here. Yeah, Frank, that's the cord, though. Yeah, the cord. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. All right. Okay, get it up your arm there, Delores. Put it up there. Help you out. Oh, I didn't know I was caught on it. All right, all right. No. We gotta, get you, we gotta get you up to the game, all right? But let me just ask you another question. Get the cord out of your hand. Okay, now you're okay. <laughs> that, yeah. Okay, sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I've asked this of everybody that mm -hmm. I've interviewed. Mm -hmm. Most of them said that their baseball career was one part of their life, and it was a good part of their life, but it wasn't their life. But it was uh. one part of their life. But when the movie came out and all of a sudden people started talking about this and saying to you, this is completely unique. There's never been a women's professional baseball league. I know. What was your reaction to this after all this stuff started coming out? I mean, you've lived your life. You've had all these things that you've been doing. And all of a sudden people are saying what you did way back then was really, really important. Did you? Well, how did you react to it? Well, I thought anything that happened in my life was important. And I felt like I was lucky to be in it. I always felt that the lucky. I mean, you know, not being egotistical about oh, I was a ball player. No, I'm not that type. I was just so happy that I was picked, and I was happy because my mother gave me good feet, you know. And I was, <laughs> and I was happy because my father, when I told him I wanted to be a ball player, he went out. Now this is the time of the war, you know. I was nine years old. And he went out and he bought me a $30 Spalding baseball glove and a $3 baseball. I'm sure there had to be an argument with Mama there, you know, but I never knew it. But I, you know, I, I, I was smart enough to know, you know, we were in a rich family, you know, and things were tight and stuff like that. And he bought me the car. He even bought me a bicycle. I was born on Easter Sunday, so I don't know. It, everything. God was right there, and I did. I, you know, I was just so happy that I was able to be part of something that I wanted to be. Even with a cop, I joined the cop and I came out first. 
and you know you have to do the physical thing. Now the men weren't there when I did it. Civil service called, called the thing. Well, I wanted to be a cop all my life, but who the heck know that? And all of a sudden, civil service call, and I go out to Barringer High School in Newark, New Jersey, which is was a tough town, right? A lot of crime, and I traveled over there and went to the thing, and now the men weren't, you know, the men mm -hmm. weren't there, but I had a, this this guy, you know, the examiner, mm -hmm. and they had an agility test. And there was a round circle up there and a round circle here. And they had hockey puck, uh, shuffleboard sure, pucks in them, yeah. you know? And so he would tell me, now what you have to do, you have to run down there and you pick up the puck and you come back. And I had to, no, you pick up the puck, you run down there and you gotta make sure you put the puck in the, in the circle. If you're on the line, you lose points, right? And you'd have to do three of them. So I said, okay, you know. So I run down, I get the puck, I bring it back. I bring. So he says, the men had to do it uh, at, um, the women, they had to do it at 20, 20 seconds. The men had eight, uh, do it at 18, you know, he told me that, yeah. So, and you go down here, the three of them were right in the thing and I did it at 16 seconds. Yeah. He couldn't believe it, so he had me doing it. I don't believe it, had me doing it another time. Every test he gave me, he made me do twice. My legs were like rubber, but I wouldn't give up. You know, the duck walk and the this and that and everything. Did every, and I did it twice, just because he couldn't believe that what I was doing, I outbeat the men. You know? I, 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 I'm not I want to talk to you longer, but you know what? You got to go to your game. I don't, I don't mean to sound egotistical. You're not, I don't you're usually. Not, I, you're not. But, I got it for the record. I love talking to you. Good. I love talking to you. Good. You know, but I don't, I, like I say, but I did do it. And he said.